up into. Howdy, I'm Jason Lewis, and today in the Auto Edits garage, we'll be working on the Jeep again. This is Pinto the Helper. We're going to be doing a couple of fun upgrades to the Jeep. We're going to be installing the Painless Performance Products Trail Rocker Kit for this thing. And what this does is offer us up these cool switches that will fit in that really neat little area right above the rear view mirror. So that's going to be a neat and powerful product. And we'll be doing our first round of auxiliary lighting from, you guessed it, JW Speaker. I have uh, been really, really happy with their product so far on the Jeep. So I'm going all the way more in, if that's possible. So I got a set of the TS3001 oval lights just because they're super cool. They make these in round as well. But these oval lights right here are going to be auxiliary driving beams. And I'm going to show you how, with that kit, wiring those in, is even easier. Gosh, I think the tenses are all wrong, but what are you gonna do? We're gonna get working. Here's my helper. And, oh yeah, behind the back over the shoulder catch. Feel good. Come on, girl. Good. Today's install is rated in the easy column, and here are the details on the players. First up is the Painless Performance Trail Rocker System with overhead mounting for the switch panel. If you're a Jeeper, Painless might be a new brand for you, but I come from the muscle car and hot rod world and have trusted Painless wiring for a couple of my older builds. I stuffed a Painless muscle car harness in this 70 Cougar with a hopped up 351 Windsor. And when I built this stunning 54 Ford truck with a modern 4.6 V8 from a late model, I used the Painless Pro Series wiring harness. They use high quality wire and pretty much wrote the playbook for making automotive wiring easier by starting the trend of printing wire labels on every few feet of each wire. The thing that attracted me most to this kit is the extremely simple install and flexibility the Trail Rocker system offers. The power center mounts up in a convenient spot right next to the battery and contains all of the fuses and relays for running your lights and accessories. The main wire loom runs across the back of the engine bay and you only have to pass one connector through the firewall to run everything. Since my Jeep is a 2013 Rubicon with rear window washer, I had to clearance the hole with a die grinder to make it big enough to get the connector through. Then I just used the included grommet and sealed that sucker right back up. Now, about those JW Speaker TS3001 oval auxiliary lights. They are designed with a pedestal mount, which made it easy to secure them into pre-existing holes in my metal cloak bumper. I ordered these in the driving beam configuration, rated at over 1900 lumens, which means really bright. They are extremely durable and match the high-end look of the other JW Speaker lights on the front of the Jeep. I really like that all of these components look like I meant for them to be there. The light kit came with connectors, relays, and a switch, but I went to my local hardware store and bought weather pack connectors for added cool factor, and I'll show you why having a wiring system like the Trail Rocker makes this install even easier. I just took the output wire for switch one from the Trail Rocker harness and split it to both front lights and wrapped it in plastic wire loom and then runs here, splits off. As you can see back here, I made little pigtails for each one. I then just ran a negative wire from each light to chassis ground and boom, you're done wiring auxiliary lights. Get my point yet? Well, stay tuned because there's even more to come. All right, since we've got the engine compartment side buttoned up, it's time to move on inside the Jeep here. First up, we'll go ahead and remove some of this stuff and I'll buzz you through that so we can route our wires and mount the switch panel. I have grab bars, so the driver's side must come out for a moment. Then just unscrew that sun visor and move the passenger visor out of the way. Pop all the plastic pieces up the A-pillar loose, and finally, pop the windshield header panel out and get ready to do some installing type stuff. Since this Jeep has the auto dimming rear view mirror, I ordered the relocation bracket to make a bit more room for this switch panel. Grab a T20 Torx and remove the footman loop. I know, who knew that's what that thingamajing was called? Reinstall the footman loop with the switch panel bracket. I told you guys, easy stuff here. 
Now, grab that upper plastic panel and measure 11 and a half inches from the bottom edge and make a notch for the switch panel wire loop. And then clip this tab out of the way. Wrestle all the things back up into place and start tightening down the trail rocker switch panel and get your wiring where you want it to go before clipping the header panel and side panels in and reinstalling the visor and grab bar. All right, well, come on over here and we'll go ahead and get this thing plugged in. Wow, it's been looking good. Now there are a couple of options right here. You can actually splice this into an ignition wire located under here and have the panel only go hot when the ignition is turned on. It defaults to when you plug these two in, the panel is hot. So I'm gonna go ahead and experiment with it like that and see if I want it ignition on. So for now, I'm gonna leave it like this. We're not gonna do the option. I can show you that in the future if I like it. I'm gonna go on this next trip with it like this. Also, here's a winch control pigtail. We're not gonna use this right now either. Um, so we're just gonna stow all this. So that's what we do now. Let's stow it and button this up. And that's it for the installing portion of our video. The switches look right at home and I'm very happy with the fit and finish of the trail rocker system. I'll be getting custom switch covers once I get a better idea of which switch will control what. For now, let's get back out to the engine bay and button this thing up. Plus, I have another trick up my sleeve to show you guys. And that looks good. I'll give you a quick tour of this. So this right here is a 200 amp breaker fuse and that feeds the trail rocker relay panel there. So let's just put that in place. So that looks clean, everything looks good. So what, what we have here is my winch, Jeep accessories, rugged radios, and then the painless. Everything looks really clean and that's how I wanna keep it. So we'll just tighten the positive down. Looks good. Now I had the, the negative with the little uh, battery condom there. And we'll just put that in place. And we now have just energized the system and there's no smoke or babies crying yet. So that's a good thing. All right, so before we get in there and start flipping switches, I wanna tell you about one more modification that I made that incorporates the power of having the painless trail rocker in here and having positive source wires coming into the engine bay and not having to run more relays. That's one of the beauties of having this, again, is the fact that all our relays are all condensed into one place, and then you have all of those output wires. So what I did was I snagged switch five and switch six and routed those wires, just intercepted those, routed those right to these. Now these are the electronic locker relays for the stock Rubicon electronic lockers. So what I did was I routed, and I found out online, I looked at a, a, a wiring diagram, and found this is the front locker in this particular vehicle, and this is the rear locker relay, and I found the positive wire that runs out of this. The signal wire to, that actually activates the locker out of the relay on the front was a yellow with an orange tracer, or orange stripe to it. So I ran switch five to that. And then on the rear locker, I have, it's a yellow wire with a white tracer and I ran switch six to that. So we're gonna test that out and see if that works. Now the reason I feel compelled to do this particular modification, I don't recommend it to beginners. Um, it's because I just want an easier reach to activate my lockers. It's not a bad scenario over here, but you do have to look. I don't know if any of you, and I, I feel like a pretty confident driver now, but you do have to look and you have to toggle. It's a one on, one off, or both on, off, and in the stock location. And I'm just, it's okay, that's cool. So I'll be able to just reach up and almost out of my peripheral vision, I won't even have to really look and hit my front and rear locker like this and operate them from here. It won't interrupt with the stock electrical system. It'll just send the signal through there anytime that I want. So let's find out if all this stuff works. All right, everything's plugged in. No smoke, everything seems pretty happy. So let's just, first off, since we know that the switch panel defaults to hot all the time, switch one should turn those driving lights on. JW speaker lights on. Yeah! What do you think, Pinto? Go get your wall. 
Yeah, that is so cool. Let's turn the Jeep on. Let's start the Jeep up. All right, so we're gonna fire up all the lights now that the Jeep is running. So we'll go headlights, fog lights, and our driving lights. It looks pretty awesome. I can see from that front camera, this is cool. And this is so fun. Now you guys see the power of having something like this, where now we have all of our relays in one spot, tidy, no spaghetti of wires. Um, everything is reliable and solid. And just to check, let's do a quick check on the lockers and see what happens here. So I'm seeing that the front locker is flashing. So I think we have to test it. And that means rear locker is flashing. So that means that those two worked. Even though I'm not in four wheel drive, I'm in two wheel high, and I now have both my front and rear lockers engaged. I will go make a quick test on that, and I'll report back to you in future videos about that. While doing this test, I decided that Switch 2 will run the JW speaker fog lights so that I can have them on while the high beams are on since the stock wiring harness doesn't allow that. I'll do a bit of research and show you guys how that's done in a future video. These fog lights have proved to be an absolute standout upgrade for short range flood lighting in front of the Jeep. I want them on at all times at night. So I think that got it. I have one more surprise for you guys. So JW Speaker sells these covers, these light covers in a multitude of colors, including this one, but I don't know why you would, oh, I get it. Some states require you to run a cover on your light when you're on the road, so that's what that's for, and they come with that. But some of the people I see on social media and online, I'm looking at you, Trail Recon and Mr. Frank Lopez, they run Amber. So I went ahead and ordered Amber, to be like one of the cool kids and we're gonna give them a try on this next road trip and see how that works and helps out and we'll see at night what these things do. I'll report to you guys in another video soon but let's stand back and check this out. So there you go, another very practical but very cool upgrade to the Jeep. We have our first set of auxiliary lights. The JW speaker driving lights are gonna be awesome. I can just tell already, I'll get those dialed in. We have three more switches in the painless switch panel to grow into, which means more lights or other cool accessories. Looks like I have to throw the Frisbee for Pinto here. Uh oh, uh oh, watch out. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'll let you know how the locker bypass works. And as you know, please subscribe. Hit the notifications bell in the corner. And until next time, enjoy your drive. Don't forget, you can follow me at Auto Edits Jason on Instagram. Come on, Pintos. Yeah, that's my girl. All right, let's go driving. <laughs>